Hi, thanks for joining us for this celebration of Class 15 graduating from Incubate. I'm Ash Wallington, the Director of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the University of Sydney Union, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here tonight. And of course, here can be wherever you are. For us at the University of Sydney, here is for the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. But we also have founders who are joining us from other areas tonight, across the nation and across the seas. We have people from the Dharawal in the south, Karingai in the north and Darug in the west. And we extend our acknowledgement to their elders, past, present and emerging. And we celebrate the rich history of innovation and community building that's been happening here for thousands of years. Tonight, we'll see current students. We'll see alumni return to the University of Sydney and we'll be celebrating world-class research from Westmead. The Chancellor of the University of Sydney, Belinda Hutchinson, has been an incredible advocate for Incubate and it's such a pleasure to have her here tonight to officially open tonight's proceedings. Hi everybody and welcome to Incubate's 15th Demo Day. I would much prefer we we're all together in the wonderful Incubate space in the Wentworth building. It is, however, great that we can virtually celebrate the startup teams we're going to hear from tonight. The entrepreneurial and creative students, alumni and researchers who've worked so hard together over the past few months. The Incubate program is one of my favourites at the university because it gives our participants the opportunity to think and grow and to work collaboratively with colleagues. Having been to a number of demo days before, I've just been truly inspired by some of the ideas that I've heard about, and it's been great to see their ongoing success. In this COVID-19 environment, the startups we'll hear from tonight and their solutions to pressing problems seem even more important. It'll be great to see how they go on to change the world. We just have to have an environment in which health and well-being is improved and we can bring digitization, AI and other innovative tools to bear in making our lives better. So let's get on with it. Let's hear from our startup teams. There's 10 of them tonight and I wish them every success this evening and as they go further along their innovation journey. I'm looking forward to seeing you all back on campus as soon as we can. Have a great night. Thank you, Chancellor. Now tonight's demo day is a little bit different. It's BYO and people are beaming in from their homes and studies around the world. And we really encourage you, if you see anything you get excited about, to share it on social media on the links below. One of the other reasons why this cohort is different is it's the first cohort that's been program managed by Ben Lindsay. But he's also been supported by an incredible team at Incubate and we need to spend a couple of seconds just recognising and thanking them. From Nina and Persis in the Incubate team to Lucas and Beck in programs, Rabab, Lizette, Cynthia and Amelia, and not to forget our entrepreneurs in residence, Emily and Andrew, a big thanks for everything you've done to get the cohort here tonight but it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the coaching and support provided by Ben Lindsay. And it's now my pleasure to invite Ben to the screen to introduce you to Class 15. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking part in Incubate's most unusual demo day yet. My name is Ben Lindsay, and I was fortunate enough to be the program manager of Class 15. As the program manager, I expected to be challenged. I worked alongside the brilliant James Alexander as an entrepreneur in residence throughout 2019. This gave me a glimpse of the planning, the execution and the overall effort this role has. But never in a million years would I think the team and I would be challenged like this. Like most, we moved our program to Zoom and we did it fast. This turnaround time was a team effort. I want to take this opportunity to quickly thank every single startup team, every Incubate staff member, and the whole Incubate network who put their best foot forward and showed resilience with us over the past three months. When the Incubate team and I designed the program, we had a number of goals, but one that became a key focus for me was ensuring that when the founders finished the Incubate program, 
my role in helping them establish goals and track their progress was unnecessary. I wanted them to finish this program with an unquestionable ability to go back out into the big, wide world and grow without an external program structure. How often do we hear of founders in accelerators and incubators who, as soon as the program is finished, ask themselves, so what now? At the start of this program, teams established their own trackable, measurable and observable weekly goals. We call these our momentum metrics, the number of calls, emails, face-to-face meetings, tasks done on time, the list goes on. They were specific to each team. The team made them themselves. It was their own choice. And they held themselves accountable to improve their weekly performance on these momentum metrics. We utilize methods here that encourage discretionary effort to go above and beyond what the teams were asked to do or set out to achieve. We also introduce weekly cohort update meetings. Every startup would run through wins and challenges from the week and the cohort would give the feedback. I'm so very proud to say that this structure rendered me almost useless towards the end of the program. I remember it as clear as day on April 17th. I sat in the cohort's weekly updates and listened to them asking each other brilliant questions and giving each other fantastic recommendations. I barely said a word. Every startup you will hear pitched tonight has shown, without question, an ability to work autonomously. They have proven themselves as teams who can maintain their own momentum, and they have bonded as a cohort. Here we have a group of individuals, quantum researchers, designers, data scientists, marketers, engineers, and microbiologists. All of these individuals who can lean on each other to ask for advice, who can lean on each other for accountability without the formalized structure of Incubate. Goal accomplished. And lastly, it brings me great pride to highlight that two thirds of the pitches tonight are being represented by female founders. This is testament to the hard work done by the Incubate team the University of Sydney, and the Sydney startup scene. I cannot wait to see what the future holds for every single one of these teams tonight. So let's get on to the pictures. For those of you on YouTube Live, please show your support on the live chat. Feel free to send questions and feedback so that we can collate them for the startups. And if you're interested in meeting the startups for a one-on-one session, you can talk to them live over Zoom right after the pitches. Simply click on the Calendly link provided to you in your invite email to this YouTube live event. Firstly, we have Emily from Compass IoT. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Bobbis and I'm one of the founders of Compass IoT. If you've ever driven through a major city, you might have noticed rubber strips on the road. Or you might have seen people standing by the side of a road, manually counting vehicles. This is how most of our traffic speed and volume data is collected. In fact, we've been collecting traffic data in the same way since at least the 1930s. But in 2020, as our urban populations are growing, our cities are expanding, and the strain on our infrastructure is only getting worse, do we really think that these ways of collecting traffic data are still adequate? Why are we trying to plan the cities of 2050 using the technologies of the 1930s? The problem is that city planners currently spend a lot of money on hardware to understand our cities. This hardware is outdated, it's time consuming to implement, and it's really expensive to use. $6,000 is what it costs the average traffic consultant to analyse the traffic flows at a single intersection. One traffic consultancy might do hundreds of impact studies per year, and if you consider In Sydney alone, the number of traffic engineers, local councils, research organisations that all use traffic data, all of a sudden you have a billion dollar problem. 
What if we could make the process of gathering traffic data more efficient and more cost effective to better future proof our city infrastructure? Compass is building a digital transport management platform. The purpose of Compass is to replace this expensive and outdated hardware with a software based solution that's cheaper, more accessible, and faster to use. The value for users is that they can view traffic data for any road in Australia, for any time period, instantly. In the last four months, we've achieved $100,000 in annual reoccurring revenue. We've successfully onboarded five clients and an independent report has verified our speed data to be 97 to 100% accurate compared to existing methods of data collection. This means Compass's platform already meets industry standards for accuracy. Within the next two years, we have five goals for growth. We want to improve on our existing platform, invest in our software capabilities, and eventually scale nationally. But traffic and infrastructure planning is not just an Australian problem. We intend to scale internationally, initially expanding to New Zealand and eventually to the UK. Our team has two asks. First, we're looking for contacts into councils, consultancy firms, state governments, or any industries that will benefit from better data for transport and infrastructure projects. Second, our team sees the value in the knowledge of others. Similar to the ecosystem that we have built for our customers, we want to build an ecosystem of mentors that can provide support and feedback as we continue to develop and expand Compass IoT. I want you to think back to that $6,000 intersection, that four-week-long slog of a project. With Compass, that four-week problem becomes a four-second problem. Well done, Emily and the team. Great work on developing a data collection tool that has not evolved since the 1930s. The team at Compass IoT have done a brilliant job over the past 14 weeks. They've even closed big deals during this lockdown period, so great job. Next up, we have Will from Nook Workspace. Scott and Will on the team were great to work with throughout this program. As a stand-up comedian, Will could have been a bit hard at times, but we simply locked him up in his own soundproof booth and everyone got their own jobs done. So good luck, Will, for your pitch. Hi guys, Will here from Nook Workspace. Open plan offices, the Silicon Valley hip and funky way of creating collaboration hubs and idea percolating meccas, right? Well, I'm not sure about you, but I am sick to death of not being able to do my work because all I can hear is my co-worker Kevin speaking to his partner about whether Taco Tuesdays should be changed to Thursdays. And I'm not alone in feeling this way. Studies and research all around the globe echo these all too familiar frustrations for employees that work in open plan offices. For example, the Harvard Business School in 2018 revealed three things about these open office environments. One, we are less productive in them. Two, we actually have less face-to-face -face collaboration. And three, they're having detrimental effects on employee well-being, health, and happiness. However, open office plans aren't going anywhere simply because they save businesses too much money in real estate costs. And although working from home is the new norm as we speak and brings to light the much needed benefits of quiet time for productivity, we don't see working in your sweatpants with your pooch beside you whilst your favorite reality TV show plays in the background being sustainable into the future. That's why at Nook, we've created the very first Australian owned, designed and made soundproof booth for the open office made from recycled plastic bottles and FSC certified timber. We deliver our booths flat packed to businesses of all shapes and sizes around Australia, which comes together in under just 45 minutes between two people and an Allen key. We've designed the Nook to be flexible enough for an SME so that it can be moved around or come with them as they grow, but also structurally sound enough so that it still serves its ultimate purpose, soundproofing the user from the cockatoos outside. So workers can now get the essential quiet time benefits of working from home while still having a healthy balance of human interaction with their team members. Some other features. It comes with a light box and two fans at the top, so to ensure the booth and user remain cool, calm and collected at all times. It has a workbench and whiteboard to jot down those aha moments that come to mind whilst on a Zoom call. 
and of course, an electrical panel so employees can remain plugged in at all times. So I'm certain most of us here have experienced this pain point before, but you're probably still asking yourself, what's the real value a business gets from buying your product? Well, quite simply, our booth will save businesses thousands of dollars in lost employer productivity every year. I wanna give you some numbers to illustrate this point. An average employee is distracted four times a day in their office, according to a study by the University of California. That same study went on to show that it takes these same employees approximately 23 minutes to refocus on the task at hand. So if my year five math stands to be true, that's over 90 minutes of lost productivity every day, or in other words, 19% of an average working day. So if we use the example of our friend Jack, who works in a large consultancy firm as a grad student and is on a $50,000 salary, Jack's employer is losing up to $9,500 every year, simply from Jack being distracted by his colleagues, and that's best case scenario. So it's easy to see why the Harvard Business Review argues that this problem is one of, if not the single biggest silent killers to a company's long-term profitability. So this is where we come in. Let's be conservative and argue that our booths will eliminate just one of those distractions every day for our friend Jack. Well, Jack's company would be saving approximately $2,500 every year. But are our booths a one-to-one -one employee based product? Certainly not. We will be recommending businesses to buy one booth for every 10 of their employees. So if Jack and his fellow employees are each distracted just the once less per day, that business has just saved over $24,000 a year in lost staff productivity. So what does a company pay for this $24,000 annual saving? Well, we sell direct to our consumers for just $6,000 a pop, inclusive of shipping to all major cities at the click of a button on our website. This all sounds great for our customers, but what do we make as a business ourselves? Our COGS, including the manufacturing, delivery and assembly at our customer's doorstep, currently sits at $4,000, with opportunity to bring this down in the future. We take a 50% deposit and collect the remaining balance 14 days after the delivery. Extra upsells will include assembly, a store for the booth, and any marketing collateral a company wishes to put on their booth in the form of a decal. Now, we've taken some big strides in the last 12 months, going from the initial concept at the beginning of last year, right through to production for our first batch being underway as we speak. In that same period of time, we won the Sydney Uni Startup Genesis competition, which included a $25,000 equity free prize. We've secured over $150,000 in booked revenue, and with a small amount of online marketing, have seen some positive patterns emerge through our ad spend. We have a small yet agile team. Scott, my fellow co-founder with his consultancy background, is the long-term strategic and visionary behind the company. Myself, with a background in law, meticulously analyze the product operations and logistics. We've also got two fantastic advisors in Steve Chapman, the founder of Shine Drink Australia, and Charlie Gearside, the ex-Koala Mattress Head of Creative, who is now a founder of his own startup, Eucalyptus. If you'd like to join us on this journey, we're on the lookout for some early seed capital to assist in scaling our marketing campaign and implementing the bigger ideas we have for the future. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to chatting to you soon. Well done, Will and Scott from Nook Workspace. Now, right now, it's fair to say that Mother Nature is letting us know who is in charge. Victoria from Relievables has a brilliant solution that empowers businesses to do good on behalf of the planet. So good luck, Victoria. Hi everyone, my name is Victoria and I am the founder and CEO of Relievables. We enable businesses like yours to do better by doing good. We all know that businesses are facing increasing pressure from customers, employees and investors to address their social and environmental impact. And it's presenting a number of problems. This is John. He is the CEO of a national logistics carrier. Now I know he's looking very smiley here, but he's actually facing a lot of pressure. He's in an industry well known for its negative impact on people and the planet. He's always competing for tenders and investment against businesses who are operating more responsibly. This puts him on the back foot and it makes it harder for him to grow. John knows he must act, but he's unsure where to start. He has no time and the business doesn't have the right expertise just yet. This results in a manual and outdated approach, not to mention the risk of making inaccurate claims. Engaging consultants is expensive and tends to be a single point in time snapshot. And this is why Relievables is building a responsible business management platform that enables businesses to take control of their impact in three easy steps. 
Firstly, businesses can discover where to focus with best practice benchmarks and real-time recommendations. For John, recommendations might include introducing a carbon offset scheme. Secondly, they are able to track actions centrally, leverage templates and action sequences for continuous improvement. Thirdly, businesses can easily see progress from their reporting dashboard and quickly create tailored reports for all their stakeholders. The value for users is that they save time and money, have peace of mind that they are taking the right action and as a result, improve their bottom line, their brand reputation and importantly, customers' loyalty. In the last four months, 96% of businesses we have interviewed have opted to trial our platform. We have built and delivered the MVP. We have become the technology delivery partner for a corporate leadership network who will promote our platform to their 8,000 clients. 10 businesses are trialing our platform with 40 to be onboarded. In addition, we have identified a channel partner interested in licensing our product. Our primary market is medium to large businesses operating in Australia, but with a global footprint. They are all facing pressure to act more responsibly and have large B2C customer bases also needing to improve. And initially, we are focused on the logistics and e-commerce industries. In 2021, $150 billion will be spent on sustainable goods alone. The Australian, US and UK markets are currently most aligned with our product, with 40.7 million businesses in total. With a focus on logistics and e-commerce and an average revenue of $6,000 per business, we estimate an annual turnover of $896 million. Our platform operates on a tiered subscription model with industry-specific add-ons. Further down the track, we will have the ability to license to preferred channel partners. As head of global growth and platform for a logistics technology startup, I was responsible for enterprise sales and integrating technology solutions for companies including DHL, Singapore Post, FedEx, Toll, eBay, 7-Eleven and BP. As a sustainable business consultant, I've helped hundreds of businesses reduce their costs and increase brand trust as a result of sustainability practices. Finally, as an e-commerce business owner myself, I understand how hard it is to be a responsible business in this current climate. Our team is growing rapidly with a focus on product and data expertise. We have built a team of eight advisors with a broad range of experience to assist us in scaling. In closing, if you or a business you know is facing pressure to improve their environmental and social impact that needs to build brand reputation or maybe just needs a competitive advantage, please reach out and put them in contact because no brand wants to be facing a customer boycott, loss of market share or loss of capital for failing to act as a responsible business. And Relievables is your competitive advantage. Thank you so much for your time and please stay safe and healthy during this crazy period. Great work, Victoria. Now our next team have traveled the world testing their product hypothesis. In fact, they are Australia's first team to final in the Holtz Prize Accelerator at the UN. Good luck, Elisa from Logique. Hi everyone, this is Elisa, co-founder of Logique. Thanks to technology, accessibility to hiring and job roles has never been easier, but it comes at the cost of an outdated, ineffective and biased system for screening candidates. In fact, as many as 90% of employers admit to experiencing a bad hire each year. So we set out to validate this and spoke with 60 employers across two months. We found, for SMEs specifically, wasting hours on end sifting through countless resumes only to find 10% somewhat relevant, with the quality never being guaranteed. This was particularly the case for student recruitment, where 75% of employers were still uncertain about candidate success on the job, even after conducting interviews. This validated our hypothesis and decision to target fast-growing SMEs as our early adopters, as many still don't have a fast, reliable way to assess best fit at scale effectively. That's why we're here to redefine recruitment with the new logic. One that's skills-based and candidate-driven. It's peak simplicity and speed for what actually matters. 
and that comes from two things, challenge hiring and skill passports. Our challenges simulate on-job tasks, such as creating a marketing campaign or answering a customer call. Like a simple drag and drop, employers can use our templates to create their own challenges so they get folks who can actually do the job. With the skill passport, we're able to dynamically track every candidate. The more challenges they complete, the more accurate their profile of skills, work style and aptitude becomes. Our algorithm then runs 24 seven to skill match those candidates into jobs without them even applying. So they get to focus on themselves and not spend hours on resumes and redundant applications. And the best thing is we're hands-free for employees as well. Our AI engine auto-grades challenge responses, translating it into behavioral data points through all major psychology frameworks to output a single fit score. For employers, this means no more being bogged down in resumes and only investing the time for relevant pre-vetted candidates. But how do we ensure our challenges and frameworks are valid and credible? We've accredited our challenge design solution through theory and research based on the University of Sydney's graduate qualities framework and findings across 6,000 academic research articles to create our own adapted framework. Simultaneously, we use industry applied practice, working with employers to further validate this. Our B2B model is one that makes sense for our customers. Growth stage SMEs only hire when they need to. So we ask them to only pay for what they use by charging per challenge deployed. We also offer power-ups per challenge for quicker marking, deeper insights, and more applicants with options to purchase a monthly pass for more frequent needs. But why are we different? Well, firstly, we offer auto job matching based on skills, challenge performance, and work style alignment, not simply being based on interests like most common hiring platforms, such as Ribbit. This means employers are only spending time on those who are relevant. Secondly, because we track the skills and progress of candidates over a longer period of time, rather than it being a single snapshot, like most psychometric tests, we provide a more dynamic and accurate overview. Third, we capture a more diverse and wider talent pool by including candidates that would have otherwise been missed due to existing screening tools only focusing on historical data rather than potential through merit and without bias. Since coming into Incubate, we launched an MVP in a week and iterated over the last two months, talking to customers weekly. We now have grown our community to over 600 plus users with the 12% week on week engagement rate among student candidates. But more importantly, here's why you should invest in not just our idea, but us as a team. We've not only traveled the world together professionally, we're also the first Australian team to ever reach the United Nations in the Holt Prize Accelerator. As both previous startup founders with Brent, our CEO, having built a $1 million edtech business previously, and myself managing growth for five years in HR and edtech, including a recent Y Combinator startup, together will make a difference. Over the next few months, we'll be running a COVID-19 campaign to onboard early job partners and potential customers. So our ask today is that if you know any high growth SMEs or startups looking to hire from a pool of student candidates, whether now or in the future, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. All right, next up we have Michael from Real Me. Now, Realme is a product that strums a heartstring for me because my long-term partner and I met through online dating. And Michael has found a great way to turn the industry here on its head. Good luck, Michael. Hi, I'm Michael from Realme. And I'm gonna show you how our dating app got 1,500 signups in the past three months using zero dollars in advertising. When we look at the online dating scene, we see a dominant format headed by Tinder and Bumble that have similar profiles for its users. There's a clear focus on good looks through photos with simple profiles to swipe, but that diminishes the other aspects that a person has to offer, like their hobbies or personality. Through a survey we sent out to our own users, we found four key reasons people stop using these dating apps. They don't move beyond online messages. People are different from their initial impressions. Narrow filters limit them sometimes, 
And the most common response, it's not fun after a while. It feels tedious and sometimes numb when you're mindlessly swiping through the app. Dating apps, also known to be predominantly male-based, and even the efforts of Bumble to be more female-friendly have failed to have a predominantly female user base. Now, what if this could all be solved with something as simple as a video profile? If a photo can be worth a thousand words, then how many words can a video be worth? It could be a video that sends a short message to make the experience more interacting and engaging. Or it could be something that shows off more of your personalities and hobbies. And instantly, you can feel more of a connection in comparison to a simple photo-based profile. That's where real me comes in. A simple solution, such as short videos, can fill in these gaps. We don't take away the superficial elements that we know are core into how we become interested in someone. But instead, we use a less restricting medium to allow users to express and introduce themselves more creatively. A key part in how we do this is also our Discover and Explore page that allows you to see profiles from all around the world beyond your geolocation for pure interest or inspiration to the other creative ways people are using video to express themselves better. We have received positive indications of traction so far, as we have over 1,500 signups in the past three months. What we do is we find key influencers within small uni societies, repeat this process a few dozen times to create great network effects that allow us to have organic signups. We have converted 10% of them onto a private Facebook group, which acts as our MVP. This gives them a platform for them to share and create videos while we collect feedback on the core features they want on our app. What is something we are proud of is the fact that 64% of our users are female, which is a huge disparity to all other dating apps. We found out that when you allow other factors to shine through, people stop looking at you superficially or as an object. Just look at some of our user testimonials that prove this fact. We see a huge market size in the online dating industry. Currently over 95 million people use online dating apps worldwide. 5 million of them are in Australia, and we hope to acquire 800,000 of them within the Australian market. 78% of Gen Zers have indicated they will use online dating apps, and since these are most of our users, we expect positive growth as a whole in the future. Acquisition costs to this day have been basically zero due to the fact that we have been taking advantage of our network effects, but we know as we expand to other states and countries, it will get harder. We believe we will charge $16 per month, and if the projected 25% of our users from the freemium-based model will be paying, that is a revenue of $38.4 million per year in Australia alone. We will officially test this model as we roll out beta testing for our app in the coming weeks. We see the market like this, with more traditional dating apps like eHarmony that focus on depth but have a very slow process, the Bumble and Tinder who have fast pace but don't show the same depth in their profiles. We see ourselves positioned perfectly, following the fast paced model that made Tinder and Bumble successful, while adding more dimensions to it. We have a strong team that covers key facets essential within the startup hours, like the business side, design UI UX experience side, and of course, the tech development side. We have big dreams for Realme in the future. We're really pleased with how we've got to 1,500 pre-signups and 150 active users, and we want to continue that growth. So if you've got experience in growth for consumer apps, we want to talk to you. We want to continue to build our community with network effects through more of these societies before we start spending money on large scale marketing. So we're not currently seeking investment, but we know our growth ambitions will inevitably require capital. So if you are an investor, we'd love to chat and put you on our investor update list for you to track our progress over the coming months. Help us change online dating by using short videos to help people show the real me. Thank you. Great work, Michael. Now, if you're like me, only able to speak one language, traveling to many foreign countries poses a great challenge. Now, the reality is this is the case for tens of millions of Chinese tourists every single year. Bowie from Easy Trip 
has built a great product to solve this problem. Hi everyone, I'm Bowie from EasyTrip, your pocket tour guide to explore the world powered by augmented reality. Now imagine you are traveling in a foreign country. You haven't been here before. You don't speak the local language, and they don't speak yours. There are cultural differences, and you don't know where to go. This can be very daunting when you first arrive at the destination, alone, directionless, and without any local support. For most independent travelers, right now, they need to download at least four to five apps to complete the whole trip. For example, maps, review apps, and translation apps. Especially for a lot of Chinese travelers, Google Maps and Facebook, they are all banned in China. So it is even more difficult for them when they travel overseas. On average, there's 1.4 billion international tourist arrivals each year globally. This is not a small problem, and EasyTrip is solving this problem. It is an innovative augmented reality travel app for travelers to discover and explore all the local, authentic, and unique experiences when they travel. It is like a pocket tour guide. It understands where you are and shows you what you need. When you go to a new place through the lens of a camera, you can explore great venues and authentic experiences, real time at your location in your language. It is very fun to use, and you can discover as you go without missing anything near you. This is supported by our unique augmented reality technology integrated with translations, and we also provide detailed information of the venues, navigation, personalized recommendations, special deals, and you can join events as well with Easy Trip. It transcends the language and cultural barrier, removes the uncertainty when you travel. So you can explore the world with a better sense of direction. It is the one and only app that you need when you're traveling overseas. Right now, Easy Trip is free for the travelers. For the venues, we provide a freemium model, free to join on board with a commission fee per transaction. When travelers purchase a deal, for example, news or experiences on the platform, and we also offer a customized AR marketing package for only fifty dollars per month. We can co-create some very cool AR effects to market your venue, so you can stand out from the crowd. In the market, there are a few Chinese apps and global platforms, but it is very rare to have a company with the ability to play in both markets and do it well. And in Easy Trip, we have the capability to do it. Comparing to all the players in the market, Easy Trip is the only app that is leveraging AR technology to empower Chinese tourists. To have an organic experience, to discover as they go, we understand their needs and we show them authentic local destinations. Our primary market is the Chinese market. It is the largest and most lucrative tourism market. Historically, there's 1.4 million Chinese tourists here every year, together contributing 12 billion dollars. And globally speaking, the Chinese tourists traveling overseas. A 100 times that of Australia. Starting from the Chinese market in Australia, we have an ambition to grow globally. There are already more than 10,000 venues information available on the Easy Trip platform, and we have tested the technology in America and India. It shows we have the capability to expand globally. We are very thankful for a lot of the organizations and the New South Wales governments that have been supporting us for this whole time. And we can't do this without our dedicated team. We are a very diverse team from different countries. We have both business and tech experts, and we are all travel lovers. We understand the market, and we have the ability to make a global impact. In the future of tourism, we can see there will be increasingly more people traveling globally. With 5G rolling out, we can fully utilize the potential of AR. And in tourism, experience trumps everything. People love fun and unique experiences. Right now, it is a special period of time. Easy Trip is rapidly developing. We are here to support local businesses. We want to partner with more great venues to develop better experiences to help them to promote to the international student market that are already here and prepare for the expected coming tourism boom later in the year. 
If you have friends in the tourism or hospitality space, especially restaurants, cafes, shops, and event organizers, feel free to come to talk to me afterwards. Also, we are planning to raise a round of funding later on. For now, we are looking to get to know angel investors and potential people to join our advisory board. If you know anyone, please let us know. And for all of you, feel free to go to our website, sign up, and test our app. Together, we can make global tourism accessible, authentic, and fun. Thank you. Nice work, Bowie. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. This class, we had a team of researchers working with us on a part-time basis. They will also be in class 16 and doing their final pitch at class 16's demo day. The reality is they were in charge, amongst many other things, of mapping out the genome of COVID-19 here in New South Wales. Verlaine from Contagionomics is going to give you an update on the progress they made throughout class 15 and what you can expect from them over the next six months ahead of the next demo day. Hi, I'm Verlaine and I'm from Contagionomics, where we provide precise, targeted therapy guidance for antimicrobial resistant infections. As an expert in microbiology and genomics at Westmead Hospital, I and my team are on the front line in our everyday fight against the microbes that plague us. Antimicrobial resistant infections, AMR infections for short, are infections where the bacteria has changed so that antibiotics, which were once the miracle drugs, no longer work on them. AMR infections are projected to cause over 10 million deaths per year by 2050. That is more deaths than all cancers and diabetes combined. And it's not just the sick or the elderly at risk. AMR infections affect anyone of any age in any country. They are a serious threat and it is happening right now. In order to address this, a new wave of therapeutics are being developed. This is a booming market and you can see that new therapeutics that we are referring to in red made up a quarter of all FDA approvals in the last four years and there are plenty more advanced therapeutics on the way. This diagram shows the number of advanced therapeutics within the dark green circle that are on the market and readily available to clinicians. However, we have populated the light yellow circles with the number of new therapeutics that are in various phases of clinical trials. Advanced therapeutics are entering the market rapidly. However, these advanced therapeutics are costly, require a trial and error approach of prescription, they require a personalised approach to be effective and there is a high chance of therapy failure. At Contagionomics, we have developed a tool called the Bundle that maps the whole genome of an individual's AMR infection providing the clinician with the most reliable and cost-effective course of action. It works by identifying a unique fingerprint of AMR infection. We will then match that fingerprint to the correct therapeutic and this will enable individualised and guided therapy. This means that clinicians can substantially increase the success rate of therapies and avoid wasted dollars and effort in delivering inaccurate therapies. More importantly, avoiding death. We are set apart from our competitors in that we can deliver guidance on new strains as they arise. Here we have examples of companies that offer rapid diagnostic tests. These tests give a positive negative answer, not a guidance report. These rapid diagnostic tests require new strains to be first identified by public health laboratories. In the last row, CareDX offers therapy guidance like us. However, this is for organ transplantation. There are other companies that offer guidance for cancer therapy. No other company provides guidance for newly circulating infectious diseases. 
The contagionomics bundle can best be illustrated in this case study where we've taken prosthetic device surgery. This is a high cost surgery, usually around the $19,000 to $30,000 mark. And this surgery can often result in antimicrobial resistant infection. If this happens, the options are revision surgery, in which the devices are removed and replaced, and this is at a cost usually around three and a half times more than the original surgery. Or advanced therapeutics can be trialled. Now this problem is set to rise along with a projected rise in this surgery of 276% by 2030. And this will cost the Australian healthcare system $5 billion. If we look at this flow chart, if we have the contagionomics guidance of advanced therapy on the arm at the bottom, there is a high likelihood of successful treatment at a cost of around $19,000. If we don't have the contagionomics guided therapy, then we have a high risk of unsuccessful treatment, which can lead to chronic infection, disability or death. Or you have repeat surgery that costs around $60,000 to $100,000. Our team is a combination of world-leading researchers, clinicians and business specialists headed by Professor Vitaly Sinchenko. We also have key partners with the University of Sydney, New South Wales Health, New South Wales Health Pathology and the Centre for Infectious Diseases and Microbiology in Public Health. Over the next six months, we will be focusing on a review of our IP protection and will be approaching private health insurance firms. The team and I are excited to give you an update on our progress at the next Incubate Demo Day. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Verlaine, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you and the team do over Class 16 in Incubate. Next up, we have Ragi from RNA Digital. If you've ever built an e-com store like myself and tried to connect all the buttons, the forms, the pages through to Google Analytics, you would know it's an absolute nightmare if you cannot code. This team have got a really simple and brilliant fix. Let's hear from Ragi. Hi, I'm Ragi, one of the co-founders of RNA Digital. Around three and a half years ago, while working at Adobe as a technical consultant, I realised that a good proportion of my job function involved this tedious, laborious task of tracking buttons on a web page. Then I came to the realisation, why don't we automate this task? Why don't we build a platform that automates the tracking of users' behaviour, such as clicks, form submissions and drop-offs on a web page? After speaking to a number of my colleagues and a few enterprise clients, I realised that this problem was bigger than just me. I realised that this was a problem faced by the entire industry. To put it into perspective, around 29 million websites are currently using Google Analytics, all of which would experience the same tedious problem. This got me thinking, what if we built an automation layer that sits on top of existing analytics platforms, a SaaS platform that would automate much of this laborious work? So we built Raptor. So what is Raptor? Raptor is a SaaS tool that automates web analytics tracking. It enables just about anyone to track a user's behavior on their site 15 times faster than I could on my own. It used to take me anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes to track a single button on a page and it would cost our clients approximately $250 an hour for me to do so. Now I can track 100 buttons in the same time it takes to track one at a fraction of the cost with higher accuracy and more consistency. One of the biggest problems that we used to have at an enterprise level was post-implementation handover. We would deliver our clients this very sophisticated analytics platform, but they lacked the skills in-house to manage it. Raptor not only automates the task of tracking, but enables marketing departments to become more autonomous. They no longer need to rely on developers to implement tracking. Using Raptor, anyone can track user behavior. What is unique about our platform is that it integrates with your existing solutions. It doesn't replace them. That means that if you have Google, Optimizely, Mixpanel, or Adobe, will allow users to set up tracking in each of those systems via our platform. After building our initial POC and demoing it to a number of partners, we asked them how much they would be willing to pay for a product like this. Most of them said somewhere between $1,000 to $3,000 per month. What we have achieved so far is honestly nothing short of amazing. In just a few short months, we have launched our beta platform, 
which comprises of a Chrome extension and a cloud-hosted web app. We have partnered with five of the biggest names in digital marketing to help us pilot our product. And we have become globally recognized Google Cloud Build Partners, which opens up several sales and marketing opportunities. We have secured $60,000 in angel funding with a sophisticated investor, and we've been awarded a $25,000 MVP grant from New South Wales government. But we're not done just yet. What we want to do now is we want to increase the functionality of our platform to give our users more power over their digital tracking. Based on the feedback and the feature requests we've received from our beta partners, we want to build a number of new features, such as site monitoring, that allows us to detect changes on pages and make tracking suggestions to our users. Tag monitoring. Using anomaly detection, we will predict the potential for tag failures, preventing loss of data. Plugins. Given that the large majority of enterprise clients utilize some form of a CMS, it's prudent that we develop plugins to these systems to streamline the integration and experience of our platform. Campaign managers. By integrating our platform with downstream systems, such as Google Campaign Manager, we'll enable our users to gain a better understanding of their marketing ROI. In order to achieve these milestones, we need to grow from a headcount of three to approximately 10. Also, given that 70% of our target market is based in the US, for us to achieve our target market penetration, we have our sights set on the States. We are looking for an investor that will help us achieve these goals. We need someone who understands technology and has experience in the US expansion market. From a monetary perspective, we're looking to raise approximately $1.5 million. If you are interested and willing to join us on this journey, please contact me. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Okay, last but not least. Now, when this team applied, I hadn't put a face to the application. The application they submitted was complex, convoluted, mentioning qubits, CZ gates, noise filters, etc. But quantum computers, the panel and I, we had to hear them out. We were met with a team that compromised of surfers from New Zealand and the best dressed individual in the co-working space over the next six months. This was a real surprise. Here to tell us how Opacity will revolutionise the quantum computing industry, we have Tim. Good luck, Tim. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim, a quantum computing researcher and founder of Opacity. We're the first quantum computing software company that can map out errors across the full quantum computing stack. From financial optimization to rapid drug discovery, the markets that quantum computers will be deployed to are huge. Quantum computers, the next generation of supercomputers, really are going to change everything. So, it shouldn't surprise anyone that tech giants like Google, IBM, Microsoft, and a contingent of startups are now locked into a space race to build the first quantum computer. The problem is current quantum computers are plagued by errors and no one can build one that works yet. Why not? Well, think of a quantum computer as a city where performing a computation is like navigating a car from A to B in this city. When the quantum computer is working, we get from A to B. However, if we don't and instead end up at C, then the answer is wrong. Here's the problem. They currently don't have the actual map of their city. They're navigating off their design, not what they've actually built, which will have errors, and even small errors can ruin a computation. To use this quantum computer, they need to navigate, but they don't have access to the actual map. Currently, most of the effort is going into getting the quantum computers they build to be closer and closer to the ideal design by trying to remove all of these errors. But this is proving difficult, expensive, and slow. At Opacity, we want to flip this problem upside down. Don't make the city fit the map. Make the map fit the city. We've developed a software tool called Quiver, which can, for the first time ever, plug into a quantum computer and build that unique map from scratch. We're like Google Maps for your quantum computer. With the actual map, we can now navigate a new route through the errors, taking you from A to B, effectively increasing the performance without touching a single piece of hardware. 
The beauty of this new approach to mapping quantum computers is that it can be plugged into every level of the quantum computing stack. From the bottom stack, which contains the quantum nuts and bolts, to the top, where the end users, which are hedge funds, pharma companies, and governments, log in and use one. This is unique to Quiver, and we will be the first company to bridge the stack, accelerating the delivery of functional quantum computers to real applications in markets. IBM Q have recognized the value of this approach, and Opacity are entering into an exciting partnership with them, joining their IBM Q network. Firstly, this gives us the ability to use IBM quantum hardware to test our beta product. Secondly, it connects us to 40 odd other members of the network, which include many top stack customers, including Goldman Sachs, ExxonMobil, and Mitsubishi Chemical. Lastly, IBM Q will soon be opening a cloud marketplace where we will have the opportunity to be one of the first tools that their customers can use in their applications. With over 100,000 users on their service already, this is an extremely exciting path to market for us. Also, the advantage of being amongst the first products in this marketplace is massive. 2019 reports have estimated a total available market of over $200 million, which through market validation, we have identified an obtainable market of about 13 million. This is a nascent market though, and we are currently sitting at the beginning of an exponential market growth, with estimates putting the industry between three and six billion dollars by 2025. IBM Q are the first to have a quantum computing cloud platform, but Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and AWS are about to enter the game. There are exciting times ahead for the quantum computing industry, and Opacity will be a key player. We have an epic team. Tom and I are final year PhD students and experts in quantum computing. We're bringing the scientific research that forms the basis of Quiver. Phil, a data scientist and engineer, is our CTO and is leading the development of the Quiver API, bridging our science and tech. Claire, our COO, brings her experience in consulting and project management to handle business operations, as well as keeping a close rein on any excessive academic exploration. We invite investors who are interested to get in touch, as we'll be looking at raising seed funding at the end of this year. Let's get chatting early so that we can demystify this new market for you and explain how Opacity is going to fit into it. Last year, Google ran the first quantum computation that couldn't be done on a supercomputer. This was a first launch moment. Opacity have the tools to take the current state of quantum computing to a whole new level. The question now is, who is going to be first on the moon? Thank you, Tim, and thank you everyone who has watched the Incubate Class 15 demo day. Now remember, if you're interested in meeting any of these startups who pitch tonight for a one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so via Zoom. You have a Calendly link in the email invite you received for this YouTube live stream. And for all of you out there who commented, liked, and gave feedback over YouTube live's chat, thank you, we'll collate it, send it to the startups, and they'll get back to you as soon as they can.